Hello, this is Sean Mullery from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo. And what I'm going to look at in this short lesson is a slight modification to my previous program, whereby I'm going to use uh, pointers instead of arrays uh, for the uh, elements of the structure here, uh, such as the first name and the last name. Now, what I'm actually going to show in this one is I'm going to put one of them as uh, use one of them as a pointer and the other as a character array just to show you the difference between the two of them. You may remember in the last lesson uh, I jumped a little bit ahead of myself and I had put in a, a modification which um, which was meant for this program but I, I'd actually put it in a little bit early and it threw a compiler. Error. So uh, just to show that to you and obviously the other thing then that I had to do in order to correct that was I had to use the string copy function. Now you may have noticed that it came up with a warning there which is not an error and it said incompatible implicit declaration of built-in function string copy. And what that basically is telling me is that um, an implicit declaration, in other words, we haven't said it explicitly, we've implicitly declared another function. In other words, uh, it's assuming that, we, um, that, we're, that we're trying to write a new function or something like that. Um, and it's saying you can't do that, that's already a built-in function. But the thing is, it's not entirely sure because uh, and that's why it's throwing a warning. For all it knows, we might be trying to write our own one, but one way or the other, it knows we've made a mistake and it's helped us out, uh, which the compiler does from time to time. Um, it realizes we've done something wrong and it goes for the best option that it has available to us. So in this case, it doesn't really know, did we want to write our own function for string copy or did we want to use the built-in one? And because it couldn't find one that was uh, written by us, it used the built-in one, even though we hadn't explicitly asked it to do so. To do that, we should have written hash include stringhh, stringhh dot h I should say. Okay, so that's the string um, the string header file telling it to use that and that should hopefully get rid of that warning and I've made some of the mistake in, while I was changing it. Yeah. So just give me one second to Okay, and there it all comes up uh, perfectly as we can see there uh, without any errors or any warnings apart from that little uh, uh, compiler I wrote when I was uh, when I was uh, fixing something up here. Um, so what I'm going to show you next though is a modification to this where I'm going to get rid of the array. So this is where I was uh, playing around with it just before the recording. And I'm going to make that a pointer to a character. Now remember a pointer to a character only points to a single character, but if it's a string of characters, then it can continue moving to the next address and the next address and the next address until it meets a null terminating character to tell it that a string has finished. So this is a perfectly um, fine way of using um, the system to uh, to do a character array by a different mechanism, and a character array being a string. <clears throat> the thing is, though, when we when we show the uh, employee struct up here, as I said, when it's just as a struct up like this, um, it doesn't actually use up any memory. It doesn't use up any memory until we actually create one. So we can see here that um, the first one, employee Sean, and we've uh, just declared it in the exact same way as we did previously. Um, this will be slightly different in that um, this 20 bytes here will still be used up. But the previous 20 bytes is now just uh, an address of an individual character. Now, an address of an individual character still takes up about four bytes, but it doesn't take up as many as the 20 bytes. The thing is, though, we don't get something for nothing. So when this uh, character array, Sean, is created here, that had to be created somewhere temporarily. And when I say temporarily, it'll, it'll keep that spot. But we then get the address of that, and uh, that's the address that we assign to up here. So overall, we can see that uh, Sean is four letters. If we include the null terminating character, that's five. And the address that would have been used for it is another four. So we would have used up nine bytes with that particular mechanism. So this is quite interesting because it means that we wouldn't use up quite as much memory as long as we weren't um, going for uh, the same number of bytes. It doesn't, however, allow us to... Uh, to modify it that easily later on. So don't assume that this is some sort of a dynamic memory or otherwise we have to have still written into the program exactly what we're going to put into each one of these. Um, later on the course we'll be looking at situations where we can decide on the fly to have smaller or larger arrays but we'll, we'll come back to that later on. So um, we can do it by the mechanisms that we've, uh, we've shown previously but what that also means then is that um, rather than the string copy we can do what originally appeared in my one, which was just assigning it here like that. 
Okay, now I'll just take the uh, the cursor off it because I'm trying lots of different colors here to um, to see what's the best. So we're looking at this line here, remember. Um, so Fergal dot first name is assigned Fergal. Now important to understand what's going on here. First name here is a pointer to a character. When we create something like this, it's a string or a character array. Again, the actual information there is an address of where that uh, string is actually stored in memory. And therefore, the two are of the same type, and we can just assign one address to the other address. Okay, so this is a, another use of, of pointers, where pointers and arrays are, can be almost used interchangeably. We don't really need to change anything other than that. And so um, I can just save that and run it. OK, and we can see that it's, it's worked in the exact same way. So um, that's one to try and fiddle about and, and try lots of different scenarios where you try them in different ways to kind of get used to this idea of the pointer. Um, while, the, while we, we discussed pointers in the, in the first um, week of the course, and, uh, or sorry, the first kind of two weeks of the course there, uh, looking back at the material from a previous course, um, do remember that um, pointers are going to come up again and again and again throughout this course. Uh, we're going to be using them in different ways. Um, and the more we use them, um, the more complex, obviously, you'll realize that they are, but you'll also realize the more useful they, they are because uh, it's not always obvious at first why we would use pointers. And so hopefully after we've gone through many examples like this, you'll see good reasons for doing it. OK, so this is using a pointer. Uh, inside of uh, one of our structs. The next thing we're going to look at is, can we have a pointer to a struct itself? And of course we can, um, but you're going to have to uh, operate in a slightly different way. So we'll look at that in the next lesson.